tell us about this event. Where are we? What are we doing here? What's kind of the, the purpose of this event? Well, here obviously it's uh, the objective for us is to be able to bring the top level of show jumping here in the U.S. and in Los Angeles. Uh, we've launched a concept initially in Paris, then developed the event in, in Hong Kong. Uh, so we're obviously very pleased to be able to bring the event here to L.A. and to, to be able to showcase the, the highest level of, uh, of show jumping here on the American continent. Uh, what's surprising to me is that there's such a huge enthusiastic group of people that love this sport, right? But at the highest, highest levels like this is, I don't see a lot of it uh, getting out to the to the audiences. I mean, for me, I know it's on TV, which is fantastic, but what is it that you think is going to have to happen in order for it to become the next NASCAR or some other sport that would be equivalent? Well, it takes a little bit of time, of course, to, to make sure that we can grow the event progressively and grow the audience. Um, our experience in the past, for example, in Paris, we're, we're obviously a very much That's different niche, in Paris. niche sport, and so 80% of the audience was uh, horse lovers and people from the equestrian world uh, attending the event, and progressively it grew to a, a much wider audience that had nothing to do with the sport, just heard about the event, wanted to be part of it, wanted to be part of a prestigious sporting event, be able to see the, the best athletes in the sport at very close quarters, as we see here. So um, the objective for us here in LA is to develop the same, same aspects to make sure that we can open the sport to a wider audience, uh, bring the crowd from LA, from the US, from California, to, to, to the LA Masters and to make sure that they understand what the sport is all about and how, uh, how their experience can be. Uh, you know, it's a very unique setting, I think. Uh, there's, and I think, not, no other sport where you can approach the, the athletes at such, uh, with such proximity. Uh, you never go to a, a locker room, uh, see Kobe Bryant before or after a competition, and here you can see... It's right uh, here in the warm-up ring. Yeah, exactly, yeah. they're all here. So can you give us a little bit of background about how you got into show jumping? Because you've been in it quite a while, right? I have, yeah. I was very lucky, I guess. <laughs> but my parents had horses since I was born. So I kind of grew up in the stable. And they had horses just at a local riding stable in Milwaukee. And uh, they had a riding, uh, riding school there. So I started when I was three or four years old in the riding school at a, at a club in Milwaukee. Okay, and so if you were to fast forward to today, what have you seen change in the sport, I mean, especially at the highest levels? Uh, at the highest level, for sure, the, there's uh, a lot more prize money than before, which is great for us. Um, a lot more, um, I'd say it's in the media, not as much as we'd like, but a lot more than it was then. And I think also it's become so worldwide, you know, yeah. there's... Uh, riders from all over the world and many more top riders than there used to be. There used to be maybe 10 or 12 at a show and now there's 25, 30 probably people that could be capable of winning at each event. Yeah, Sometimes event. more at, you know, at the Olympic World Championship level. Right. How do you view kind of the differences between, you know, how it's working well in Europe and maybe up and coming here in the U.S. What are the major differences that you're seeing? What does the U.S. need to do in order to make it as popular as it is over in, in Europe? I think the main difference comes from the fact that it's really traditional in Europe, especially in France. I Why is it traditional? Sport. Because we are doing that since many, many years. Well, we used to be on horseback in the, West, the old Western days, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I speak about uh, jumping. You know, jumping is really a tradition since many, many years. And I think uh, all the, not, uh, the main uh, écuyer, we call écuyer the, the masters in, uh, in equestrian from dressage jumping, they come from Europe, Spain, Portugal, Germany, France, with the Cadre Noir, with the big yeah. school um, in, uh, in France. So it's, it's really traditional. So for, uh, for the people, uh, they get uh, a good feeling about uh, horse riding. So we have a lot. The biggest part of the job is done. You know, yeah. We don't have to tell all the past and because people know that. We just have to, to speak about the present, about sport, about uh, intensity. So it's easy when you don't have to do all the job. And in and America, you, you have 
to explain a little bit more yeah. and um, maybe not to focus directly on the people and the public on the sport on what they are doing and they have always to come back to explain a little bit uh, what it is so you lose a little bit of intensity when 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 you can speak directly about oh uh, uh, I'm happy I won or uh, because people know oh but ah, it's sad uh, my horse is not in a good form uh, we can speak really sincerely with the people and it helps a lot for the communication we can directly say what we are living and yeah. not explain the whole backstage and everything. And you seem to be the exception, and t correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like you've got a good, very good social presence but maybe some of the other riders, even the five-star riders, don't have that yet. Is there some advice that you would give them or what is it that you would tell them? Um, yeah, I mean absolutely, you know, I think there's a lot of really amazing riders out there who I really respect as riders, uh, but I definitely see that they're a little bit lacking in their ability to connect with the crowd and to show emotion and I think that that's something that's very important you know we're humans and you want to go out there and when you win a class or when you feel you know, the rush of going through the timers you want to pump your fist and you want to cheer and you know show the emotion that the crowd wants to see so I think that's something that is very important um, my advice is really to, to make an effort at it um, you know it's difficult sport and we have a lot more bad classes than we do good, good classes you know the best rider in the world is going to have more classes that don't win than classes they do and I think that, you know, I always take pride in the fact that I've had a lot of practice at losing, and I think that I do that pretty well. Right. So maybe that's a little bit um, of my advantage as far as communicating with the crowd a little bit as well, is I get very excited when I do go well, but I'm also able to handle it very well when I don't win, which I think is equally as important. You know, it's, we all have emotion, and we're all upset, and we all want to do well, and um, it's one thing to get off the horse and have a moment where you're sort of just need it for yourself and you're processing it but then if a little kid comes up to you and you still wants your autograph you have to smile and say you know what it's okay I'm gonna try hard next time and I think that for me I've, I've really mastered that in you know having a bad class and sort of putting it behind me. Do you think um, that would help the sport at all? I, mean, I, I don't know if you're familiar with other US sports like say let's say Formula One or NASCAR right Formula One's pretty big in Europe not so big here but NASCAR is really big and they're doing a you know a really really good job on social networks to kind of promote their athletes and their uh, drivers. Do you think that would help the sport and maybe it's you know audience size here in the U.S. and maybe in Europe? Yes, I think what the point you are telling about is very important. With professional people behind who could manage this and bring this sport really in front, it could help a lot. Also for the crowd for the people who are loving this sport and so on so that's the point what you said with a professional team you could do a lot me uh, personally on my own it's very difficult to do a thing like this because of the kids and all your responsibilities yes exactly have yeah. to work right i mean have you ever thought about putting out behind the scenes content about you down in the definitely. stable do you do that with the definitely audience? we have we've just started to work with a sports agent now and or an agent just kind of help yeah. us think of some different ideas yeah. to revamp a website and for us to be a little more accessible because yeah, I think yeah, when yeah. I was growing up I knew riders like BZ Madden for example yeah. I was she's still riding and she's still riding and she's an idol of mine and right. I now I get to talk to BZ every day but I would have you know done anything to just read a magazine the interview on BZ or hear what she does on a day wife. off something yeah. like that I would have been so interested in so I think that's I know I can take from my own experience as a kid dreaming to get to the top sport knowing the Having, knowing that I really wanted to get to know these riders in a better level. So I think for us and myself, we are trying to do that and make it ourselves more accessible. What is like the number one misconception about this sport? For me it was, that looks easy, the horse is doing all the work. But I know, I know for sure now it's, it's not that way. No. Is there any other misconceptions about the sport, like it being an elitist sport? Or? Probably being an elitist sport is a bit of a misconception. Like like you said, it's, it is an expensive sport but, and you need backers. so. There's a lot more to riding than just having riding talent. You have to be able to have people skills. You have to be able to develop a whole team, just like NASCAR. Yeah. Uh, people that take care of the horses, uh, the veterinarians, blacksmith, uh, owners that can buy the horses for you, um, sponsors. Uh, so you need somebody that can manage all that for you. And it, it is a whole team of people that are behind every one of these riders at the top level. Do you know about the MMA here? Yes. So literally, Five six years ago, they had nobody knew about them. It's very fringe sports, very violent, right? Yeah, yeah. And they were able to bring, you know, a lot of attention to their athletes through social media and through, you know, all kinds of promotions online, offline, TV, frankly. Yeah. Have 
if you thought about that in this sport and uh, what, what are your thoughts on doing that uh, in a similar vein here? Yeah, I've thought of it a lot. You know, I try, my wife and I run our business together and we always try to think a little out of the box on how we can be pushing the envelope a little bit to get to the next level. I think in the States, sport, horse sports in the States is pretty thought of, you know, old Virginia, fox hunting right. country, rich guys sport. And right. I think that it's always going to be expensive, but there's ways for everyone to access, to access the sport. So for myself, you know, I ride, I'm lucky enough to ride for a family and owner that owns my horses and sponsors me, but not everyone's that lucky and I know that could go at any minute. So we try to get sponsorship, get my name out there, get our brand, our business out there and turn it into a brand. Um, we've talked to the sports agents and we're trying to do different things to try to get to the next level. I mean, it is a sport. I think it's, though it's not accessible for everyone because unfortunately the expense, I think it's something everyone can enjoy. And if you don't know anything about horses, you go to the show. You know, if they knock the sticks down, it's not good. If they don't, they win. It's That's simple enough to understand the concept. So I think that pushing ourselves to get more media coverage and to find different avenues to get some recognition is a good thing. So let's shift now to brands. Yeah. And, you know, I notice you're, you've got a brand that you're wearing. Yeah. And what do you tell brands when it comes to this sport, right? When they the brands look from the outside, and I'm just giving you my perspective, they see a very good, good group of audience members mm -hmm. that they want to reach, I'd right. want to reach, at the you know kind of price points that some of the right. Longy and That's some right. of the other brands are at. So what do you, how, how do you attract more of those brands into the sport? What do you tell them? You know, I think that if you look at the majority of brands that sponsor riders, they're mostly equestrian brands. They're horse speed, they're riding boots, they're show helmets, um, show clothes. But I think it's just now that we're really starting to see great brands like car companies and Longines and Rolex who are coming in and, and giving us their support as well. And that's amazing because, as you see, it is a very glamorous sport. There's a lot of money in the sport. There's a lot of celebrities, and it's starting to get cool that again, attention. That that I think the brands are the right in, so that's a great thing. I think we'd love to have some more of that. Our brands are now looking for riders, riders athletes, athletes nice trainers, space, whatever, space, whatever don't do it, it takes that are connecting more with, more with their audience like you are so they can Make use you that go relationship go and that trust to build with your audience to kind of at least expose your audience to the brand. To make yeah, absolutely, and I think that's, you know, something that's very important to me. Um, you know, I really have a great amount of respect for the brands that I am representing. Um, I take it very seriously. I would never let myself represent a brand that I didn't genuinely yeah. want to use and trust and take pride in being able to say, I love this brand and I can speak from the heart about it. Um, so I think that that's something that, yeah, absolutely, brands want to see their athletes being able to connect with the crowd. And, um, you know, even when they might not be winning classes at the show, still out there and, you know, be able to market themselves and, and the company. So why are you one of the few people that recognize that relationship with brands to you, to your audience? Very good question. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's something that, you know, like I said, I, I have studied a lot of sort of sports business, yeah. sports management, sports media. That's something that um, I think is very important to know a lot about if you are an athlete, um, especially in a sport like this where it's not as mainstream and it's not just going to happen where you can go out there and learn how to pick a ball and you're going to be from the front of Sports Illustrated. We have to work a little bit harder to be marketed role and... To, to be popular in our sport, um, it's not just about the riding for us, and I don't think it ever will be. So I think that's something that's very important. And for me, anybody who is an athlete or involved in a sport should be studying all aspects of it, um, the way it's branded, the way that you know companies are looking to come in, the way that the media works around it. I think it's all something that's very important as far as being an athlete. It's not just about getting on the horse and riding around. Yeah.